the topic for today is uh, introduction to self organizing map. In short form, they are referred to as ASOM, right. So, this is a new chapter that we are going to learn uh, in this lecture. Uh, we already had an idea about the principal component analysis, okay, and we had seen that how the principal component analysis can be realized using uh, the neural networks, using the linear <coughs> neural network model, okay, where uh, we had seen that it ultimately evolves into the determination of the uh, principal component. So, if there is only one neuron at the output, then that results in the first uh, principal component and if there are more, then it extracts the second, third and so on of the principal components, which is very much uh, useful for the case of data reduction. Now, this in effect is a sort of um, uh, an unsupervised learning, because we are not providing there any desired or target response. Okay. Everything evolves okay, through the repeated presentation of the patterns, okay, which uh, is basically a, a self-learning or rather to say uh, an unsupervised learning that uh, takes place. Now, we had already um, touched upon the uh, topic of uh, competitive learning when we were discussing about the different learning mechanisms, okay, where I think if you recollect that what we did, there we had taken uh, several neurons okay, uh, and we had presented and those neurons are connected. Okay, uh, essentially, they are fully interconnected to the inputs, okay, and there, the um, uh, I mean, out of the neurons which are there at the output, okay, th they are competing amongst themselves in order to determine the winner, okay, and those learning mechanisms we refer to as the winner takes all mechanism in the sense that whosoever is the winner, the neuron which emerges as the winner, okay, all the synaptic weights are adjusted in favor of the winning, electro, uh, winning neuron, so that if the same pattern is presented once more, then it uh, wins the competition, I mean then it has got a greater chance of winning the competition, in the sense that even if not the same pattern, even if you feed a pattern that is very close to the pattern that causes the winning of the neuron. Okay, even for that pattern, the chances of uh, the, that uh, neuron winning the competition improves. Okay. So, that was the winner takes all mechanism. Okay. Now, the self-organizing maps that we are going to talk about also works on the principle of competitive learning, but then why it is uh, being treated differently from that of the competitive learning is because it, I mean although it uses the competitive learning mechanism, but uh, here, there is a kind of organization. Organization means that there is a spatial organization that we are talking of okay, in the distribution of the neurons. So, essentially here we are talking in terms of a lattice of output neurons. The lattice that can be arranged as either a one dimensional lattice or two dimensional lattice or even higher dimensional lattice space the neurons will be organized. Okay. Although, uh, for all practical applications, we normally make use of one dimensional and two dimensional lattices and higher dimensional lattices are not that popular, okay, because of the complexity that uh, is brought about. But uh, essentially, by organizing the neurons in, the, in a very structured manner, in the structure of a lattice, okay, if we now present, I mean if, if those neurons are connected to the inputs okay, in some manner okay, and then we feed the input patterns, then those input patterns will be actually acting as a stimuli to uh, uh, those uh, 
neurons which are there at the output. So, that when the stimulus is present, then I mean out of the different neurons that are existing in the lattice, one of them will be the winner and the synaptic connections okay, from the input layer to the output layer will be adjusted in such a way that the synaptic connection will move the, the uh, I mean the synaptic connection will be moved, uh, I mean the weight updating will take place in such a way that the Euclidean distance between the input vector and the weight vector that is minimized. Okay. So, I mean uh, the uh, uh, minimization of the Euclidean distance effectively means the maximization of the W transpose x output that we will be seeing otherwise. So, now what happens that uh, one of the neurons will emerge as a winner and we are feeding different patterns okay. from the input space, we will be feeding various types of input patterns to the systems uh, to the system. And then I mean depending upon the input distribution, because the input distribution is actually not a uniform distribution, okay. the, the inputs will be distributed in some random way okay, throughout the input space. But if we start with a regular lattice structure, okay, depending upon our input statistics, okay, the ultimate organization of the lattice would be slightly different. But the ultimate organization of the lattice that results would be indicative of the statistics of the input pattern that we are applying as a stimuli. Right? So, this is the essential philosophy. So, that means to say that, that there will be a weight adjustment and essentially the synaptic weight adjustment that takes place will physically bring, I mean you can imagine it this way that as if to say that it will disturb the lattice structure and it will move the winning neuron okay, physically to the input. Okay. The adjustment of the weight vector that takes place should be such that it is moved closer. So, in other words the lattice that ultimately results will be indicative of the uh, statistics. In fact, this aspect will be more clear when we take up the specific examples of the self organizing map, because first of all we will be explaining the different models. I mean in fact, there are two popular models of self organizing maps which we will be talking about that is van der Malsberg model and then the Kohonen model. And of these Kohonen model is the more general one okay, since it permits data reduction and that is why we will be dealing more with the Kohonen uh, model or what is known as what is uh, more popularly known as Kohonen self organizing map. So, very often the literature uh, talk about the self organizing map as Kohonen SOM or they call it as Kohonen competitive learning. I mean basically they are one of the same as referring to the self organizing map based on Kohonen model that also we will be discussing. And in fact, uh, another point which should be noted at this stage is that I mean uh, that uh, the neurons which are there at the output, they uh, act in a competitive manner in the sense that they inhibit the responses of each other. But what happens is that uh, I mean like it is uh, I mean it is also neurobiologically inspired I mean one fact exists that the uh, neurons which are close to the winning neuron okay, they tend to behave I mean they, they tend to have an excitatory response. That means to say that around the winning neuron an excitatory response is generally created whereas an inhibitory response is created for the neurons which are there far distant apart. Okay. That means to say that this exhibits this sort of networks will exhibit long range inhibitions and short range excitations. Okay. So, uh, these mechanisms also we will be explaining. But before going into that, uh, there is one very important aspect which should be borne in mind. And that is to say that what actually motivated 
the development of this self organizing maps. In fact, it is neurobiologically motivated. Why? Because you see our brain receives the signals from various sources of inputs, right? I mean some inputs are visual, okay, which are obtained from our eyes and then ultimately uh, obtained through the retinas. I mean the uh, responses of the retinas, they are fed to the uh, brain, okay. Then the um, uh, acoustic responses, tactile, I mean so the acoustic inputs, tactile inputs, visual inputs, all these different sensory inputs that we are processing, it is seen that they are processed in different regions of our uh, cerebral cortex okay, in the brain. And since they are actually processed in different physical regions, okay, one can really believe that there is a topological ordering of computation that takes place. Okay. And because of that, I mean it inspired, I mean, uh, I mean the topologically ordered computation was neurobiologically inspired and so the field of uh, uh, the self organizing map okay, developed okay, in consistent with the neurobiological model. Okay. So, uh, let us first see the different models that uh, exist. I mean the two popular models of the self organizing map as I had mentioned a brief while back are the, uh, um, I mean uh, van der Malsberg model and the other is the more general Kohonen model. So, let us uh, see the structure of uh, these two models. Now, uh, this van der Malsberg model actually is called as Wilshaw von der Malsberg model. Okay. Now, here the structure is like this that we will be having an array of presynaptic neurons and an array of postsynaptic neurons. So, let us draw two arrays. Okay. Now, this is an array of presynaptic neurons and this is the array of postsynaptic neurons. And here, these are the elements of the array. and presynaptic neurons also will be having similar arrays. Now, let us take uh, any one uh, of the neurons belonging to the presynaptic uh, layer okay, and it will be connected to the postsynaptic layer fully interconnected in fact. I mean all the postsynaptic neurons will be fully interconnected to the presynaptic neurons. Okay. So, that we can uh, draw the connection from let us say take this neuron, it will be connected to all the neurons which are there in the postsynaptic layer. So, we can draw the connections. So, this essentially will form a bundle of synaptic connections. So, this will form a bundle of synaptic connections. In fact, this model was used to explain the retino optic mapping. Okay, so this very nicely explains the retino optic mapping okay, from retina to visual cortex. So, retina will form the input layer or presynaptic layer and visual cortex will form the postsynaptic and they are interconnected to each other through a bundle of 
synaptic connections. Okay. So, this is what uh, Wilshaw von der Malzberg model says. Now, here one uh, point to notice that the dimension of the input and the outputs they are the same. Okay. So, input dimension. So, here input dimension is the same as that of output dimension. Now, one point uh, which should be uh, noted here is that the basic idea of this Malzberg model is for the geometric proximity of the presynaptic neurons. So, we have to consider the geometric proximities. In fact, the electrical signals, okay, they are based on geometric prox uh, geometrical proximity, uh, proximities. So, the electrical uh, signals of presynaptic neurons okay they are based on geometric proximities in the sense that if uh, this uh, neuron this presynaptic neuron is geometrically close to these neurons okay then their electrical signals also will be highly correlated in the sense that uh, i mean um, here the electrical responses that will emerge from this will be somewhat similar to this. I mean it will not be uh, absolutely uncorrelated, they are highly correlated. Maybe that when we come to think of the neurons lying here which are at a distance from these neuron, I mean which are not geometrically close, there the electrical signals can be different. Now, what happens as a result of this is that uh, you see it is I mean I have shown the connection from one input to all the outputs okay. like this all the inputs will be connected to all the outputs. Okay. But let us now take the case of some uh, post synaptic neuron let us say the post synaptic neuron out here. Okay. Now, here you will be finding that all these responses will be strengthened okay i mean because this one i mean uh, if this neuron is active okay then all these uh, connections will be strengthened and again this is connected to all these so if uh, this signal is strong even this signal is going to be strong so that ultimately spatially it will enhance those neurons okay which are there in the similar spatial location in the sense that uh, I mean this will ultimately fire these neurons I mean will have a chance to fire these neurons more than firing those neurons. So, that ultimately there will be a spatial correlation of activities. So, that activities which are existing here will be ultimately mapped into the similar neuron activities uh, at the post synaptic layer as well. Okay. This can be shown okay, uh, through mathematical analysis also, okay. but we can go in for a more generalized model uh, as proposed by Kohonen. So, this you can call as the model number 1 that is Wilshaw von der Malzberg model, okay. but model number 2 is by Kohonen where you can think of an output layer only, okay. only the output layer is organized in a lattice. Let us say that it is organized in a two dimensional lattice, although I mean sometimes we go in for a one dimensional lattice also. Okay. And let us say that we have got an input uh, lying over here. Now, this input need not be connected in the form of a lattice, the input could be uh, I mean unorganized also, but the thing is that these inputs will be I mean you take any input that will be connected to all these outputs okay. and then there will be a bundle of synaptic connections. Okay. In this case actually 
it is possible to uh, I mean have uh, the data compression because the I mean number of inputs could be less than that of uh, outputs. In fact, what, uh, what one can do is that uh, I mean this this is what the Kohonen model is. So, this is based on the Kohonen model where it belongs to the vector coding algorithm. Okay. This is used for the vector coding algorithms okay, which optimally places a fixed number of vectors into a higher dimensional in input space. this number of vectors. In fact, those vectors will be used as code words. Okay. I mean it is like those who are familiar with the data compression techniques like say entropy coding will be knowing that if you have uh, a higher dimensional input, okay, you know that if you have got a higher dimensional input, let us like say for example, a code word of uh, uh, um, uh, an input of length L let us say, okay, could be actually compressed into a code word of length much less than L, okay, thereby doing a data compression where we will be exploiting the entropy that is present in the data. Okay. That is how people do the Huffman coding and all these things. Now, basically a fixed number of code words, okay, those code words can form a vector. All right. So, uh, this is uh, I mean Kohonen models in fact can be used in the vector coding algorithms also okay, where these kind of uh, fixed number of vectors will be placed okay, and uh, um, we will be seeing that uh, uh, later on. Okay. But uh, there are some essential processes that uh, one has to fulfill for the self organizing maps. Okay. So, we can talk about some of the essential processes in the formation of self organizing map. Here the first uh, process is what is called as the competition. Okay. Now, competition basically means that for each input pattern the neurons in the output layer they will determine the value of a function. That function we will be calling as the discriminant function. So, each neuron will compute a discriminant function. So, each neuron computes the discriminant function and this function provides a basis of the competition okay. and uh, the particular neuron with the largest discriminant function. So, the neuron with largest discriminant is the winner. And then next comes the step of cooperation. Okay. Now, the winning neuron that determines the topological neighborhood of excited neurons, because as I was telling you that the neuron that wins the competition okay, that excites the neighboring neurons okay, surrounding it. Okay. So, that the winning neuron will determine the spatial location of topological neighborhood.
So, it determines the topological neighborhood of the excited neurons okay. and excitation is obviously a cooperation, because what happens is that I mean uh, it not only strengthens the neuron which is the winner, but it's it, but it also strengthens the neurons okay, which are closer to it. Okay. Whereas, it uh, I mean by the process of competition the neurons which are f far apart okay, they are eliminated by the winner takes all mechanism. So, here this refers to the long range inhibition whereas, the cooperation will essentially enforce the short range excitation. Okay. So, these two steps actually go hand in hand it is always a process of competition followed by cooperation. Okay. And then the third step is of course, the step of synaptic adaptation okay, like uh, we find in every network structure, every neural network structure that there is a synaptic adaptation. Okay. So, what it means is that it uh, enables the excited neurons to increase their discriminant function in response to the I mean, I mean, I mean stimulus which has caused the winning of the neuron. Okay. So, it enables the excited neurons to increase their enables the excited neurons. to increase their individual values of discriminant function in relation to the input pattern. So, mind you we are in this case talking about the excited neurons only, okay, that, that only the excited neurons will have their discriminant value increased. Okay. So, otherwise the discriminant function values for the non excited will be uh, kept unchanged. Okay. So, um, uh, that means to say that when the similar pattern is uh, uh, fade, okay. then the response of the winning neuron in response to a very similar fat pattern which is fade again okay, will increase, the response will increase next time. Okay. So, this is, so these three are the essential steps, the competition, the cooperation and the synaptic adaptation, synaptic adaptation and we will be first talking about the competition mechanism. Okay. Let us go over to the mathematical modeling of the competitive process. So, there as before we are uh, assuming, so we are talking about the competitive process. So, here we are considering an m dimensional input. So, that the input x vector will be given by x 1, x 2 with the elements x 1, x 2 up to x m transpose of this okay. and the weight w j will be given by w j 1, w j 2 up to w j m, okay, where uh, this transpose where j is equal to 1 to l, if we have got what is this l? l is the l is the number of output neurons, l is the number of output neurons because m is the number of input okay, and l is the number of output. So, what happens is that every output is connected to the input. So, that for the neuron 1, for the output neuron 1, 
we will be having an m dimensional vector, it is connected to all the inputs like that for j is equal to 2 that is the second output neuron, we will be again having m number of such connections. So, totally there will be an array of m into l those many number of ways. Okay. So, we will be having l such different w j vectors. So, l, so where l is the total number of neurons, total number of output neurons. Now, uh, what we have to do is to find the best match between x and w j. So, we have to determine the, the question that exists is that what is the best match between x and w j, that is what we want to determine. That out of say there will be now a competition between this L number of output neurons. Okay. So, x is now going to compete with all the, I mean x, x is now going to find the match with w j and whichever w j is having the best match, okay, that will, that j will emerge as the winner. So, the winning index will be that j okay, and the corresponding weight will be the winning weight vector. Okay. In fact, for some applications we may like to know only the winning neuron index and for some applications we may like to know the actual winning vector. Okay. So, the question is that if we have to determine the best match between x and w j, what we have to do? We have to compute the w j transpose x for different j's. Okay. So, what we need to do is to compute W transpose j okay, x okay, for j is equal to 1 to L and then we have to select the largest, select the largest amongst this. So, the j that gives us the largest value is the winner, but in this case what we are doing essentially is maximizing w j transpose x. Okay. And as I told you that this in effect is nothing but minimizing the uh, Euclidean distance between the x vector and the w j. Right? So, what we do that if we index, uh, if we use the index i of x, so use the index as i of x vector, okay. so where i is the index okay, and it is index is based on some input function x, I mean on some input vector x okay. and the index i as a function of the input vector x will be given by the argument of the minimum of this x minus w j. Okay. Minimum is determined over all j's okay. and that j which gives the minimum value of this okay, which is in effect the argument of this one. Okay, argument of minimum j of this that means to say that that particular index is the index of the winning uh, neuron. Okay. So, uh, this, this is how we can find the index okay, and the corresponding weight vector and the corresponding weight vector to weight vector to uh, i x is the 
closest weight vector. Right. Now, uh, one point to note here is that uh, when we are feeding the uh, I mean uh, our uh, our input is actually in a continuous space right because input we are not discretizing the input x vector is in a continuous m dimensional space but what we are doing is that we are mapping it into a discrete space of I mean L outputs. Okay. So, it is mapped into a discrete space and what happens is that it is going to find the best matching to it. So, that means to say that uh, we are doing an uh, a process of approximation from the continuous space to the discrete space. So, a continuous input space of activation patterns is mapped onto a discrete output space of neurons. So, any uh, question on this? So, we have covered the competition part of it okay, so far and the uh, cooperation that is to say the uh, excitation uh, of the winning neuron, I mean the excitation caused by the winning neuron into the neighborhood. These are the things which we are going to take up in the next lecture. So, if you have any questions in the meantime, okay, you can ask me. Anything? Okay, then that is all for today.